Good evening, folks, and welcome to yet another episode of Dinamo TV, the official podcast of the St Albans Dinamo Football Club. My name is Tonshi Prusats. I am absolutely stoked tonight to be in the uh, presenter's chair, the host's chair, because this is arguably our biggest episode yet. It's our 11th episode, but uh, let me just tell you, it is going to be massive, and I keep saying it every week, but truly... Tonight is going to be the episode of all episodes. We've got some amazing guests throughout the evening, and I dare say we will go over the uh, one-hour mark for sure tonight. We've got Lou Glovan, who is the um, co-organiser and co-founder of the Jacobs Day charity, and it's a listen to his interview, which was pre-recorded earlier. Very touching, very emotional, but um, very, very very uplifting as well, and um, tomorrow night at the club rooms, there's going to be a Jacob's Day Burger Night uh, fundraiser. Um, all the money raised goes to the Royal Children's Hospital's Good Friday Appeal on this Friday. We'll also be speaking to the coaches from the senior men's, the senior women's, and also the men's under-23 side. We'll also be talking to the senior men's and senior women's player of the week as well, and the big one. All the way from Zagreb, Croatia, we will be speaking to Ivan Novosel. He's one of the members of the award-winning, the multi-talented band known as Zaprešić Boys. Um, We know them very well down under, don't we? Um, They were a guest at our presentation night last year in front of 1,000-plus fans uh, at the Sunshine Croatian Catholic Centre. They absolutely rocked. Uh, We'll be talking to Ivan, and he has got some amazing news to announce with regards to, let's just say, bringing the two Dinamors that little bit closer together. That is an episode you do, um, an interview you do not want to miss. So uh, we've got a massive, massive show, but let's start with a huge congratulations. And earlier today, in the wee hours of the morning, well, it wasn't we, it was more like 7 a.m. this morning. The Croatian national team looking, well, dare we say resplendent or, you know, maybe they're good luck um, charm. Who knows? The new Nike tops, what do you think of them, by the way? Pop it down in the comments section. But uh, they took out the FIFA um, friendly series, I guess that's what it was called, in Cairo, defeating Egypt four goals to two. So it was great to see the uh, Batreni amongst the goals. And could it be an omen for the upcoming Euro 2024 Championships in Germany in June? Well, folks, we have got a massive show lined up for you. We're going to get straight into the news desk after this short break from our major sponsor, the IND Group. Folks, don't go away. It is the it is Dynamo TV. The IND Group is regarded as one of the largest deliverers of concrete structure solutions in Victoria. Formed in 1994 by Ivan and Kathy Filipovic, their passion and commitment to getting the job done safely and economically has underpinned their success in the industry. IND partners with large-scale building and construction companies in both the private and public sectors on projects large and small. With our corporate headquarters based in South Melbourne and Storage Yard based in the southeast suburbs, we have at our disposal thousands of square metres of quality materials, along with state-of-the-art lifting and crane equipment, enabling us to deliver the largest projects. We are committed to delivering high-quality projects by partnering with our clients and collaborating with project suppliers to ensure each job is delivered to exceed expectations. From humble beginnings, IND now employs more than 1,200 dedicated professional and support staff, involved in a number of landmark projects right across Victoria. The IND Group is a massive supporter of the Croatian community, backed soccer clubs in Victoria, and is proud to be the major sponsor of the St Albans Dinamo Football Club in 2024. As well, the Churchill Reserve, it's Puya Gardari and it's in charge of proceedings this evening. As the huddle breaks up, 
Michael Dinamo, and we are just about set to get underway with the Josh Divin to kick things off here. Round seven in NPL Victoria is go. Brian Summerskill. There's George Zamaranis. Fell to Kalina, play back toward Joey Monet. And he wins the corner. I do believe the first corner of the night for St. Albans. Right, my counts. Oh, it's actually gone in. It's been tipped in by George Samaranis. We have a second goal for St. Torbett. It was a very, very direct ball in. Samaranis trying to tip it over the crossbar. Tipped it under. Georgopoulos, Ramirez, Everson. That's it's taken down and another penalty has been given away here. Two goals to his name so far this year. Ben Everson. Bullich has had a good night so far. And that continues. He saves the penalty. Carter. Had to merge with possession. Many hand ball anyway. Ball, Harding as they look to press. Hart's a good first touch. Oh, it's a beautiful finish. Some class from Robert Harding. And it's 2-1 at Churchill Reserve. Come on! Come on! Come on. Oh, how much of Harding. It's quite the goal that he did score to keep Manningham in it. Junya Carter. Golding. Outmanned. They are down to man. Manningham have been for the entirety of the second half. And that is it. St. Albans have gotten the job done here. Here with senior coach Ryan McGuffey. Ryan, another three points at home. Yes, very pleasing. I said to the boys, it doesn't matter how we win today. I just wanted them to win. And if we, we went ugly, then I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, three points went 2 0 up. Came in at half time and I think everything's cosy. They've got a man sent off. Um, but then, second half, just you couldn't string three passes together. It just, wasn't going for us, manning a good side, very good side, knocked the ball about well, so like not taking anything away from them, they're a, they're a really good side and they've got some quality in their team and uh, causes a lot of problems with 10 men. Uh, yeah. uh, certainly losing Brian Summerskill at half time wasn't ideal in terms of the, the way the play was going through the centre of the park. Well when you're a man down, you've got to make the other team opposition work, so you've got to keep the ball, move it to side to side, tire them out and try and uh, then when, it, when they tire out, then you can keep it and go forward. Um, we were going back to front, and whether that was nerves, I don't know why we were doing that. I was asking them to keep the ball and move it quickly and to tire the team out, but yeah, the, I just looked a bit nervy in the second half, and it was, maybe it is because we've, uh, we did need the win, and the boys were desperate on the win, 
and sometimes the choices you make when you've got that desperation um, aren't the right ones. Um, but we got there in the end. Like, Marco saved a penalty. Marco in the first five minutes, going one on one, and he's, he's, he's pulled out a world class save. Um, so that was the difference between the two sides of the, the keeper, and he saves, he, he pulled off with that in the first five minutes, and then the penalty save was a difference between us winning and losing. So that's the little things that make a massive difference. And good to see young Nick Murray get a run from the bench, another one of the youngsters. Yeah, a lot, like Nick's got a lot of potential, and he's came down from uh, Shepparton, and I've uh, been keeping an eye on him for a while in the, uh, the number twenty threes, and he's got he's got a big future in the game if he keeps working hard. Uh, it's just hard to breed, breed, bleed these uh, young boys in. So yeah, hopefully he'll get a sniff, and we're playing in the cup next week, so we'll maybe get uh, some minutes uh, there. So yeah, we'll maybe this the fans and the. Crowd when we get a look, a look at the yep. you know, players. Hopefully, see plenty of people down here at Churchill Reserve next Thursday for the Cup match with Altana North. Yeah, um, I'm told. Oh, sorry, Geelong Rangers. Yeah, uh, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a tough game there at State Three. So yeah, it'll be a chance for me to uh, to try a few players that haven't played uh, as many games this season, but um, I'm desperate to play. There's players there that try to keep them happy as well. So yeah, we'll give them a chance to show me what they can do, and um, it'll be a chance to obviously. Welcome back to Dinner More TV, and it is that time of the week where we have to announce who the St. Albans Dinner More Senior Men's Player of the Week was last week. Can you guess who it was? Oh, mate, after that penalty save, there can only be one winner of the Player of the Week, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to Dinner More TV. For the second time, he made a cameo appearance a couple of weeks ago talking about the Marley Plavi, but this week he's talking about being the player of the week. Congratulations, Marco Bullich. How are you, Marco? Thank you very much. I'm very well. Well, um, first of all, um, well done on, on, on a great performance. But secondly, um, obviously keeping a clean sheep is fantastic, but if, if we don't win and don't take the three points, um, we're only halfway there. But on uh, last weekend, not only did you guys keep a clean sheet, did you keep a clean sheet, but the boys scored two goals and, and, and it, was, it was such an important win, a real six-pointer. What was the mood in the dressing rooms afterwards? Oh, after the game, it's just it's a, it's more of a relief than anything. We didn't really play our best. I think we can all agree on that in the second half, given the numerical advantage and the scoreboard pressure. But we grafted hard and we got the win. It was 2-1, so we didn't get the clean sheet, but... Um, yeah, oh, the boys that's right. Yeah, what we're talking about. Yeah, boys, boys were obviously buzzing in the change room after. Yeah, now look, it was a six pointer either way. It was a game that you had to win, you did win, and and at the end of the day, you did. So, all three points, and now Dinamo moves into sort of a comfortable mid table ish position. But, um, let's go back to one of the uh, we're going to play, um, the, the penalty now. Take us through this. This was an amazing save. Yeah, look, but at the start, I'm just sort of trying to gauge if he's got any subtle tells, like when I stay up next to him. You make yourself look as big as possible, given I'm not the biggest keeper in the world. Um, you jump around, I'm obviously in bright yellow, so it makes me stand out a bit. Just pick away. He that continues. He saves the penalty. That's, that's it, really. Well, that was, that was just absolutely amazing. And look, for all the young goalkeepers out there, that is a valuable piece of advice. Make yourself tall. And, and, and I did notice that you were jumping up and down on the spot, making yourself look quite formidable. But, uh, um, and, and you just kept your eye on the ball? Or, or was it just at that moment when he kicked that ball, you just kind of, was it gut instinct or you just kind of saw out of the, in a split second, did you actually see the movement of the ball? Oh, look, I've, I've picked away and I'm thinking, you know what, it's in range here. If I stick a boot out or stick my leg out, hopefully it hits me and just goes anywhere, but hit me pretty good and went out for a throw, so it was probably the best-case scenario. Yeah, fantastic. Now, well done on that, mate. Um, you. Um, you know, we started off a little bit slowly at the start of the year. We've won a couple of games in the last three games uh, now, so um, things are starting to look good. Um, tomorrow... Um, a break from the league action, but nonetheless, it's, it's the Australia Cup up against Geelong Rangers. All right, they're State League Two. What do you do to uh, kind of avoid complacency against a team that on paper we should win, but, you know, 
having said that, it's it's not always going to be that easy, is it? Yeah, no, of course not. Um, I think we just take every game as it comes. We obviously prepare for different teams in different ways. We know if we're versing a strong team, we sort of set up in a way that will counter their formation and things. We work on areas that we can sort of attack teams at their weaknesses. Uh, like with Geelong, um, we, we don't really know much about them. They're not really on TV. We sort of go off word of mouth. Um, but yeah, we, we set up for this game like we would if we set up for your Melbourne Knights, the Derby or Avondale's the bigger games in the league. Like we do everything we can to just go out there and go win. Excellent. Well, mate, we wish you all the best for the game tomorrow, uh, the Australia yeah. Cup game, and then also the um, the uh, the week later, the resumption of the NPL Victoria competition. But uh, um, congratulations, Mark, a great performance and, and a, certainly a worthy yeah. re the recipient. But I'm also told you won, you were uh, uh, um, nominated in the NPL Team of the Week as well. So an additional congratulations there. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Good on you. Uh, Marco Bullich from the senior men's team, he took out the NPL, uh, the NPL, well, he was a member of the NPL team of the week, but he also took out the uh, Dinamo Player of the Week award. We'll be back shortly after this break. Well, that was a quick break, and um, there is the ladder standings um, round seven after round seven. It uh, paints a little bit of a better picture for um, Dinamo fans. Dino will move into ninth position by virtue of a better goal difference. They're ahead of Dandenong Thunder and Green Gully, who are in 10th and 11th positions, respectively. Um, as we said, there's a bit of a break now um, before we, we we get into the um, the next round, which will be Friday week when we um, travel to the Olympic Village to take on uh, Heidelberg United. In the meantime, it's Australia Cup action tomorrow, Holy Thursday. At, um, at Dinamo's Ground, uh, Churchill Reserve, kickoff is at 8 p.m. We take on Geelong Rangers. And as we heard the gaffer just um, talking a little bit briefly there, um, likely to give some of the fringe players a go. Nicholas Murray, who, who, who did come on, um, who has scored four goals in the under-23s, he'll be given a chance. And I dare say there'll be some of the under-23s as well who'll be getting a, a chance. Speaking of the under-23s, a great 6-0 win on the weekend. Um, they had a huge win over Manningham United. That was at Churchill Reserve last Sunday. Nicholas Murray scored twice. Jesse Chop also scored a brace. And Anthony Pondeliak and Luca Chabraya scoring one apiece. So that now means that uh, uh, Chop, Chabraya and Murray have all scored four goals each so far this NPL season. And as we can see, uh, the under-23s are in eighth position with eight points, and they will be taking on Heidelberg United, um, who are in ninth position on the same amount of points Friday week when the seniors do so as well. Um, we're going to now the dinner more cameras were inside the change rooms on Sunday after that big win against Manningham United, and this is what the dinner more TV cameras caught. <laughs> to get to this point um but the boys were just uh unbelievable today and a testament to to what they can do when they put their minds to it i think um that was the message post game was that you know we're curious no one uh, we both believe in their technical ability it's just about them uh bringing the right attitude to game day and they they showed that in spades today so the highlight the clean sheet or the six goals 
Uh, probably the six goals. Um, I wouldn't have been disappointed if we conceded one in the end or whatever it was. Um, all the goals were quality. Uh, one was from the penalty spot, but the, the lead up into, into winning that penalty was, was great. Um, yeah, just everyone played their part today. They won their, their individual one-on-ones. Um, everyone played to their ability, and that's why we came away with a 6-0 with a win against a team that had beaten Avondale 3-1 the week before. And so where do we go from here? Because obviously there's a big break now between this week and the next game, I think a week on Monday. Yeah, it's nice getting this win just before uh, Easter and that two-week break because you don't want to go into that break with, uh, with a loss and having to mull over that for two weeks. Um, so, um, yeah, look, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through a normal process uh, over the next two weeks as we build to, to Heidelberg, which is on a Monday night, strangely. But, um, yeah, it, it's just nice to be able to come to training and, more smiles on everyone's faces after a big win like that. It makes things a lot easier on the track as well, um, you know. Um, so we look forward to training uh, this uh, next week, and um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll get a lot out of the boys as well. No worries, congratulations, mate. Great effort. Thanks to you too, Berkey. Congratulations to you too, mate. <laughs> it's it's fifty percent here, so yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, yeah, good win. Um, so onwards and upwards from here. Dinamo Senior Women's Team opened their 2024 season account with victory in Round 2 of the Nike FC Cup last Sunday, defeating um, Collingwood City four goals to one. Great result, great result there. The goal scorers for Dinamo included Sienna Delia with a double, Jana Cholina and Abby Pavlinusic, who both scored one apiece. This is footage taken from... Um, um, the camera of Nick Delia, who is our new Dynamo TV reporter um, covering the senior women's team. And after the game, he caught up with the coach, the winning coach of the Dynamo senior women's team, Tommy Pondeliak. Tommy, first night cup out of the way. What did you think? Uh, yeah, look, it was um, it's good hit out for the girls. Obviously, it was our first game for for the preseason, so just important to um, just to get a bit of minutes in, in some of the girls. I uh, wasn't sure how they were going to go today, but they, they were actually awesome today. They done really, really well. Um, probably helped. We were playing on a bit of a smaller pitch, which which sort of helped us a little bit in a sense. But um, no, the girls are awesome. Back line was really solid. Um, even yeah, through through the middle and up front, um, all, all the girls done done. Awesome, awesome job today. They were really good. What was the thing that most impressed you today? Uh, look, probably in general terms, um, probably our shape. We kept our shape, I think, really well, uh, especially the girls through the midfield. The girls at the back kept a good, good uh, back four shape there, uh, but the girls in the midfield actually played um, really well in there. It was a bit tough for them. They, they had a couple of good, good opponents on them. Um, but yeah, look, the girls stood tall, done really well, and even even the girls up front, Ab Abby and uh, obviously Sienna. Uh, worked really hard. Sienna got rewarded with two great goals. Abby, the same, and obviously Yana got on the score sheet with a with a nice uh, nice strike from outside the box. Um, so all in all, yeah, the performance and and over, overall result was was really pleasing. Uh, just hopefully we can now uh, shoot on from here and and get get better as a, as the preseason goes along. Terrific, mate. Well done. On to the next round. Awesome. Okay, and now on Dinamo TV, it's time now to uh, intro, uh, well, well, to welcome and to reveal and to introduce who the inaugural winner of the Dinamo Senior Women's Team Player of the Week Award winner is. And it br brings me great pleasure to welcome to Dinamo TV this week's winner, or should I say last week's winner, Taylor Pavlinusic. Taylor, welcome to Dinamo TV and congratulations on your win as Player of the Week. Thank you. Now, it's, um, it's the first time we're having something like this, so we're matching the men. So exactly what's happening with the men is, is, is happening with the senior women's. How does it feel to take out the first award of the Player of the Week award? It feels good. I think all the girls sort of deserve this award as well. We played really 
well on Sunday and we all worked really hard and I think it gives us a good indication that we're going in a good place for the preseason. Yeah, and look, it was a great win over um, Collingwood City in the Nike FC Cup. Um, how did you see the game first of all? I think we're all very nervous going into it as well because it was our sort of first game as a new team as well. We have a few new faces this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we all played as we do. Um, we all switched on straight away and dominated for most of the game, yeah. Excellent. Well, 4-1 is, is an absolute domination, that's for sure. Yeah. Hopefully we can take that into the next round. And today, um, Football Victoria drew out the um, pairings for round three. And in round three, we've got a tough assignment. Um, State League One South East side, uh, Croydon City. Um, do we know much about Croydon City? And are you looking forward to this game? Or are you kind of a bit worried about this game? <laughs> Honestly, I haven't heard much about them. I was speaking mm -hmm. to Tommy before and... I think they're state one from the southeast side and they versed um, Ballarat and won 3-0. So okay. we've actually played Ballarat in the past and they're a harder side, but um, I have faith in the girls and I think we will do well. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, where to now for the team? I mean, obviously a bit of a break over Easter, but have you got any practice games or anything like that lined up after Easter? Um, not that I know of. I know we've got obviously our next night cup game, but... Hopefully, some challenging practice games to get us ready for, yeah. Um, yeah, more cup games. Yeah, and the season, the season itself, when does the season itself actually start? The season starts on the 21st of April, I think, mm -hmm. or was mm -hmm. it the 6th? Yep, so okay. late April, thereabouts, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, well, fantastic, Taylor. Once again, congratulations on your on your win this week, and we wish you and the girls all the very best for season 2024. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And we move now on to the Junior Boys NPL. Uh, they're the results from last weekend's game uh, games. Uh, round eight of the pre-qualification phase. So there's only three more games to go. Not much longer to go, that's for sure. Uh, we've got, um, uh, well, let's go through the results, starting with the under-14s. A good win there. I think that's two wins now on the trot for the under-14s. A 3-1 win over Geelong, Xavier Bulos, Sebastian Blachek and Marco, Marco Smolich amongst the goals. The 15s had a big win. Uh, Cruz Borg, Thomas Perdic, Maxim Mikulic scored one apiece. Dylan Bursanko scored two. That means it was a 5-0 win. Great result for the 15s. The 16s drew nil all. And the 18s, unfortunately, they lost one goal to two. Joshua Angelis scoring the lone goal for the 18s. The 14s, if we look um, at this week's games, in fact, all those games are going to be played tomorrow night against Avondale. So this is round nine. Uh, Holy Thursday round, some matches on um, pitch two. The under-14s kick off at 6.30, followed by the under-15s at 8.15. And then on pitch three, we've got the under-16s at 6.30, and the under 18s at 8:30. So apart from the the uh, Doherty Cup Australia Cup clash that against Geelong Rangers on the main pitch, as well as the Jacobs uh, Day uh, Burger Night happening inside the club rooms, Churchill Reserve tomorrow night is going to be a hive of activity. If we look at the ladder positions for the 14s. They're currently in eighth position with uh, nine points. They take on third place Avondale. In the 15s, they're in seventh position with 11 points, and they take on Avondale, who are in fifth. In the under 16s, we've got um, uh, Dinamore is in ninth position with nine points, and they take on Avondale, who are in sixth position. And then finally, the under 18s, they're at the moment in sixth position with 10 points, and they take on Avondale, who are third. Okay, let's move along now to the uh, on last week end uh, in the Maccas Cup, the the tournament that is very very popular. I think over three hundred junior teams took part in that down in the um, southeastern suburbs in uh, Cranbourne. The Dynamo under thirteen girls walked away um, with um, first place in the plate championship. It was a very high level, you know, stressful game. It was it came down to a penalty shootout and was won for the ages against um, our our friends and rivals George Cross. Um, this was a great achievement by the team, by the coaching staff, and the parents. Well done 
to all of those uh, girls. And also our under nines, they took part in the um, tournament at Melton Phoenix. And well done to uh, uh, to the girls. In their first ever tournament, they took out first place. So we certainly have got some amazing talent um, coming up. We've got some video footage of the under 12 girls, under, uh, sorry, the under 13 girls rather, at the Maccas Cup receiving their awards. There we go. Congratulations to the we victorious under 13 and the under nine Dynamo girls. Well done. Congratulations once again. Now, just a little bit of news as well. Um, just on uh, the other side of the eight, uh, Easter break, so Monday 8th and Tuesday 9th of April, so I guess it's Monday week, uh, Football Tech are uh, coming down to Melbourne. Football Tech, renowned uh, Sydney uh, Training Academy. Uh, run by the Trafiro Brothers, who are heavily involved with Sydney United. Uh, they're coming down, and we are the camp partners here at Dinamo. So they will be having a, a two-day camp from 9.30 till 2.30, both days on the Monday and on the Tuesday. And in next week's show, we will be speaking with um, um, Glenn Trafiro or someone else from Football Tech. We'll have a special guest um, next week um, when we have our um, post-Easter special, if you like. That's going to be happening uh, next Wednesday. We're going to be coming out a day early, um, just like today. We'll be coming out a day early because of um, yeah, some holiday commitments next week. Um, international news. Well, one of our own players, um, uh, congratulations to our senior men's midfield ace, Zelfi Nazari, who's starting a victory for Afghanistan over India overnight in their latest 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier. The win places Afghanistan in equal second position in the AFC preliminary round Group A with two matches still to play. So well done to our own Zelfi Nazari. Um, he was a member of that victorious Afghani side. So congratulations, there he is, and uh, well done to him. Uh, also, later tonight... Around about 9 o'clock, 9.05, we'll be crossing live to Churchill Reserve and we will be speaking to a, a, a representative from Strathmore Split because Strathmore Split, as we speak, they will be taking part in an Australia Cup uh, uh, clash with uh, Gippsland United, the visiting Gippsland United that is at Churchill Reserve. So we'll cross over there for a progress score and um, that will be happening a little bit later on the, to, um, in tonight's show. So do hang around. But in the meantime, we've got a massive, massive guest coming up on the other side of the break. We'll be speaking to Lou Glovan. Lou Glovan is the um, co-founder and co-organiser of Jacob's uh, Day. And we'll find out all about the heartbreaking background story to how Jacob's Day was founded. But it's also a, a story of resilience, of benevolence, of um, in many, many ways, um, unbelievable human spirit and courage um, that has resulted in just under a million dollars having been raised for uh, the Royal Children's Hospital over the past 18 years. So stick around, guys. Um, folks, girls, um, we've got a massive, massive show coming up.
Welcome back to Dinamo TV, and it's time now for our very, very first guest of tonight's um, very special um, Holy Week edition of Dinamo TV. And I guess the, the, the story behind our next guest and, and what he's um, behind is, is one of a rather sad one, but, but our guest has managed to transform what was quite a sad story, quite a tragic story, into one of triumph and one of... Uh, one of, of extreme benevolence, I guess, is the best way to describe it, um, where he and his uh, his wife have been involved in a long-running charity that's very close to many people's hearts in the uh, Dinamo, St Albans community. And um, tomorrow night is, is a very special night. It's uh, Jacob's Day Burger Night, and all proceeds will go to the Jacob's Day charity. And to tell us all about Jacob's Day and to tell us all about the Burger Night, tomorrow's Burger Night, um, an old friend of mine, a good old friend of mine, and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome to Dinamo TV, Lou Glovan. Lou, uh, one of the chief, uh, one of the co-organisers and co-founders of Jacob's Day. How are you, Lou? Good to see you. I'm very well, Tonchi. Uh, a blast from the past. Yeah. Yes, well, for those of you that don't know, Lou and I go way back, I think back to the old Croatian Students Association days, the nostalgic days of uh, Radio Živa Žica, I believe. Yes, uh, to not to mention all the functions that we would have uh, we would have crossed paths at Tony and we as we just don't you as we discussed the uh, ills of the world back then. Yeah, we were we were, we were, we were two gentlemen with a, a purpose in life. But uh, mate, you've you've over the last eighteen years, uh, you and your lovely wife Anna have um, have been behind Jacob's Day, um, an incredible charity, incredible that that I guess had its origins in rather tragic circumstances. But, uh, you know, let's let's unfortunately revisit um, the, 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 the early days, the origins of that. How did Jacob's Day first start? Uh, well, just to briefly touch on the history, I guess, uh, Anna and I, our first child was Jacob, or Jacob. Um, he was born uh, December 1999, so he was our, uh, you know, millennial baby. Um, and as parents, obviously, we had a we were all chuffed with, you know, how, how, how proud can you be when, with your first child, I guess? Anyone who's had, everyone who's got kids will understand where we're with sort of the, the unknown, you know, wondering what the future holds. Um, unfortunately for us, we're one of those uh, unlucky families whose journey wasn't meant to be uh, in, the in, in a traditional one, I guess, with our child. Um, Jakob took ill when he was just before nine months old. He went from a Monday morning being his normal self to us off at the doctor's in the evening because he was off his food and just crying and wouldn't settle and all the rest of the things and just worried that something's not right and feeling something's not right. Uh, next morning we went to the local hospital. Um, we were there most of the day and then late in the afternoon uh, things escalated. We ended up at the children's. That was a Tuesday afternoon evening. And sadly for us, um, Jakob passed away the following Monday night. I always, I always say that everybody remembers the night Jakob passed away or most people who are older than say 35 would would remember that night that's the night kathy freeman uh won her gold medal so yaku passed away an hour and a, a couple of hours before she won her gold medal so um mm. for us it was obviously a very sad time a very tough time um that was 2000 um and uh, obviously like everyone you grieve your your loved ones uh, the one people that are in your life particularly when it's a child and not that grief's a competition um everybody yeah loses loved ones and losing any loved ones difficult but as a as a parent i think uh we all dread the idea of um having having to say goodbye to your children whether they're an infant or an older child um it's a terrible thing to have to go through and not that we we're looking for pity that was not that's yeah. not the reason for jacob's day jacob's day came about from a discussion with a friend tony Wooch, um one night in 2005 so it was five or so years later uh, and the idea of Jacob's Day was raised as as a byproduct of just doing a, a having a fun golf day, basically. Yeah. Uh, so in 2006, we held our first one, really stepping into the unknown, um, and we aligned it with um, the good with the Royal Children's Hospital because we thought, well, there's a there's a worthwhile thing to to support. Um, Tony's got ki has got kids, and he's had he's had his children there. We've had. Our subsequent two children um, go there, and I know most people uh, have the um, have the misfortune of having to take their children to hospital. It's always yeah. a traumatic time, and we just thought it'd be a good place to uh, support. Um, yeah, now, mate, um, it's been eighteen years um, since since that very very first Jacob's Day, 
and it has become around about this time of year just before the good friday appeal it's become such a um in our community in the western suburbs of melbourne the croatian community and the wider community it's become such an institution and one of the things that's become massive is the um the golf day now we've got some footage from the golf day two years ago and um i mean since that very very first golf day back in 20,000 2006 um have, has it in your wildest dreams do you ever imagine that it was going to grow into something as big and as um, iconic as it has you know now in 2024 um I'll, it, I'll, I'll say i'll be i could say yes i dreamt it but i'll be yeah. a big fat liar so, uh, don't you? It'll be um, a little white liar. we didn't think past the first year uh even the second year was i oh, will just try to do it again and i guess we got to the gfc and we had a couple of really lean years and it it was sort of that i think after the sixth one we did it was sort of like do we keep going or not and it was a case of oh well we'll give it one we'll give it one push and that push has sort of just kept going and um apart from interruption during covid where we cancelled some events in 2000 we cancelled our events in 2000 but still ended up with fifty thousand dollars in donations that year um we didn't hold anything in 2021 because it was uncertainty around COVID, trying to find confirmed dates was fraught with danger um we relied on well relied on we we're, were very fortunate to have a lot of very generous people behind us um family friends and and people from our community as in the croatian community and and the broader community as well it's not it was never started as a as a croatian community event we do have a lot of croatian community participants um the genesis was out of the golf day but we've each equally done a social night every every year at back at the at the St Andrews Hotel, the the old pump house, which is now rebranded as St Andrews Hotel. Um, and the two events sort of really are one. Uh, yep. We hold we used to do them on the same day. I don't know how we ever we got through doing two events in one day because <laughs> I'm pretty knackered after one these days, let alone if I had to front up in the evening to do a second one. So. Um, but it's not me. It's not myself. It's uh, it's it is it is a team of people. It's a lot of our family and friends, um, Kumovi, people get involved, and we've got a we've got a lot of people that have been with us for eighteen years. Um, we've met lots of fantastic people. Um, our Croatian clubs have been involved. The not uh, St Albans, the Knights, uh, Strathmore, um, Zorda, uh, it's the Dorm. You know, we've 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 um, all those people that we, that you and I grew up with. Yeah. Um, all of our people have helped along the way. I mean, it's it's it'd be uh, very disingenuous of us to sort of say it's us. It is really the community, as in the community that has become our Jacobs Day family, which we yeah. often refer to. Um, and just looking at Dinamo, for example, uh, my Dinamo came on board purely because my son decided he wanted to play soccer when he was seven, and we gave him an option. I said, "You got you can pick any club you want to play with, as long as it's got a it's got a red and white checks on the chest. You can play <laughs> any club you want." Yeah. So he picked um, Dinamo because his cousin was playing there. So that's how we've ended up at Dinamo. And Dinamo's been this is the tenth year that Dinamo has been involved. So to, yeah, to this year's to the current committee, thank you very much for supporting us for supporting it again. It's not us. It's ultimately the hospital we all support. Yeah. Um, we say every money, every dollar we raise goes to the hospital. Um, We've never gone down the road of making this into a foundation. We've always done a, our, as a as a pass through to the hospital because we we haven't wanted to be in a situation where we feel at all compromised in terms of what happens with the money. We yep. extract the costs that we need to ex extract because unfortunately we don't have a fairy godfather who can cover all of our costs. But we do try to control those to make sure they're a minimum and that the as much money as possible goes to the hospital. And to that end, we've been fortunate. We won't quite get to. A million dollars this year but we'll be very very close um wow that's 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 not me as when i say we yeah um, yeah yeah yeah. The, everybody yeah, who's put the, a, put in there's there's plenty of people that have done put in a lot a lot of money so yeah. to all of those but, people yeah folks anyone who's ever been involved in um any one of the 18 jacob days up until now have helped the glove ones in any particular way bought a raffle ticket um sponsored gone to the events always going to the uh, jacobs day burger night tomorrow night. we'll talk about that in a sec um yeah yeah absolute kudos to you all and congratulations that is that is an incredible amount you know um almost a million dollars 
being raised over the last 18 years, no mean feat. Lou, um, no, that's to you and to Anna and to everyone in your team. That is uh, just amazing, absolutely amazing. Let's talk about the Burger Night tomorrow night um, at, at Dynamo. A lot's happening at Dynamo. That's one of well, that's the reason why we've come out on a Wednesday. We couldn't go now head to head with a Jacob's Day Burger Night at, at Dynamo tomorrow, could we? Now, yeah. no, no, we had well, to. Come I like to think early. Tony. I like to think Tony is going to be watching the game on Thursday. And that too, yeah. There's there's that happening as well, and we've got the um, NPL uh, Junior Boys NPL on pitches two and pitches three, as well as the Australia Cup. Um, happening tomorrow as well and so yeah no that's that's absolutely fantastic and and that is great to hear uh but do tell us how, um the, the burger night tomorrow night well i, I wish I, I could say um this is purely an initiative by the club um i've been a long time supporter of all of our clubs you know growing up going to the nights um going to watch dinner we're going to watch uh even dandy and, and geelong occasionally uh, obviously not as much as the local clubs because you know when you're younger you don't get to travel as far but it was really uh i think it was nearly a few years back decided look rather than, than just uh, making it as a donation that would make a bit, a bit of an event out of it and I, i've sort of said to the clubs as i understand how hard it is um, running all the clubs um to all of our communities uh, you know anyone who's been involved in in um clubs like we have taunchy over there you know how hard it is to raise money yes. and for soccer clubs these days they work hard to to put teams out on the field and to raise money to run the club, let alone then to be donating. But I do understand the synergies between supporting Jacob's Day. Uh, you know, ultimately, if any of the kids at the club are sick, the place they're going to end up if they need, um, you know, acute care is at the hospital. And uh, as we say to everyone, you know, that that's that's uh, that's what 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 Jacob's Day ultimately is about is um, for the people that support it is to make sure that the hospital stays well funded. Um, and mind you, that's probably one of the best-funded hospitals in the state. Yeah. So, but we, we, in an in an ironic way, we say our family did benefit from the funding of the hospital, um, even though we didn't get the outcome we wanted. Jacob was treated by the preeminent one of the preeminent um, doctors in his field who was working out of the hospital. So, uh, we just hope that when somebody's child ends up there, that they get the care they need. And to everyone who supports the Burger Night and to Dinamore for putting it on. The difference that makes is no one can ever put a price on it because yeah. no one ever knows which dollar makes a difference. Yeah, it might be yeah. a, a, a $10 donated or it might be a $1,000 donated, but ultimately which dollar makes a difference to someone's outcome is, is yeah. in the, no one ever knows. And I, I think every if, every if everyone supports their little bit, um, it hopefully it's something they know. It's what, like that insurance policy that you hope you never have to um, call yeah. it. Best, a good way to use it, uh, yeah, analogy to use it, yeah. Um, there you go, Burger Night for Jacob's Day. That's tomorrow night, um, Holy Thursday, 28th of March. From 6 p.m. in the Dinamo Club Rooms, Burger and Chips, only $20. Um, no excuses. Do, do go along. Help out the cause. It is a wonderful cause. And, Lou, once again, just uh, my, 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 I'm gobsmacked. I'm, I'm never speechless, mate. You know me. I'm never speechless. But when I hear you've almost raised a million dollars, you as in collectively over the course of eighteen years, um, yeah, that's 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 insanely amazing. Well done. Well, like I said, thank you again to to everyone who's been involved, and thank you very much to, to Ilya and all the guys who work so hard. And then I get there to we when we get there tomorrow night, Tonchu, if you're there, you'll see them slaving over a hot grill again. Yeah. Um, in the in the aid of I guess making sure that our, our our clubs which are which are so integral in our communities um, which provide an outlet for our kids um, a place for them to be safe and to get together with other other kids I think it's uh, admirable that we have people like like um, all of our clubs all the people that are involved in our various clubs around but um, particularly um, to, well, tomorrow night thank you very much to Dinamo and for anyone who's interested to see our final total. Um, which will be doing a will be given a brief check presentation i think on around 3 15 on friday so if you're near a tv if you're not at yep. church um tune in uh we'll post something on our socials and i'm sure dinner will share something as well absolutely but i can say that at the moment we're well we're heading over sixty five thousand. hopefully with a bit of luck we'll get to over seventy thousand for the year which um will be another fantastic result and a testament to everyone's generosity Fantastic. Lou, thank you once again and all the very, very best for Jacob's Day Burger Night tomorrow night. 
Thank you very much, Sanchi, and happy Easter to to, uh, to everyone out there who's listening. Absolutely. Happy Easter to you and everyone there. Bye-bye. Okay, folks, um, that was Lou Glovan from um, Jacob's Day. Amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. Uh, when we return, folks, big news, big news, our first international guest. That's right. That will be speak, crossing all the way to Zagreb, and we will be speaking with Ivan Novosel from the Zapresic boys. You do not want to miss this. Coming. Westar Prestige is a family-owned second-generation business which is celebrating 50 years of operations this year. They're a specialist prestige collision repair facility situated in the western suburbs of Melbourne, Victoria. However, they service all regions in the state with many of their clients travelling from far and wide to use their services. They're also able to provide a digital platform for quoting clients' vehicles who are unable to personally attend their premises. They're an authorised manufacturer approved repair facilities for Mercedes-Benz, Tesla, Peugeot and Suzuki and are proud of their ongoing affiliation with these brands. They also work closely with a number of Australia's largest insurance brands who entrust them to be part of their preferred repair network. Their support staff are always happy to assist clients from the initial process of lodging claims through to the final stages of collection of the vehicle on completion of repairs and post-repair. So remember, for all your prestige collision repair needs, consider Westar Prestige, an award-winning, long-standing Australian-owned business. Welcome back to Dinamo TV, folks. And let me just say I'm very, very excited because right now we've got our very, very first international guest. Correct. Our very, very first international guest all the way from Zagreb, Croatia. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome a member of the Zapresic Boys himself. That's right, folks. Zapresic Boys, Ivan Novosel. Ivane, dobro večer, kako si? Dobro večer, pozdrav, uh, pozdrav svima, uh, special greetings to all uh, creations in Australia and of course to all members of uh, St Albans Dinamo. Now for the, for the benefit of, of all of our listeners who are not Croatian or who can't speak Croatian, I've got one word of advice, please learn the language, you've got to learn the language, it's the best language, but in the meantime we're going to have this uh, um, conversation in English. Uh, First of all, um, as I said, thank you for joining us all the way from, from Zagreb, Croatia. Now, Zapresic boys, they're a household name in the uh, Croatian diaspora. And um, tell us, tell us your, 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 when you were here in Melbourne last time, how did you develop a close connection, the boys develop a close connection with uh, St. Albans Dinamo? Well, actually, uh, our friendship starts uh, when we were on the first Australian tour in 2018. As you know, in 2018, uh, it was the biggest uh, sports result in Croatian history. Uh, uh, Croatia playing in, uh, in, uh, in Russia. So actually, after the very uh, big and large uh, welcoming the uh, Croatian football players, uh, players on the Croatian uh, uh, main square in uh, Zagreb, where the Zapsi boys were performing in front of like 300,000 people. Actually, after the after that, it was uh, our first Australian tour. Uh, on that, our first Australian tour, uh, we were actually we didn't plan to perform in uh, in uh, Saint Albans, but uh, one of our members uh, he has a family in Melbourne which uh, which is also back then was involved uh, in the St Albans Dynamo club so actually let's say it was spontaneous agreement and we had our first concert over there in your club mm -hmm. uh, and actually it was great uh, but um, i think that the main connection thing is because uh, zapsi boys uh, today you knowing us as a band uh existing now already for 18 years so we start in 2005 but actually we start uh, as dinamo zagreb fans we were not uh, even have a clue that we're going to have a band in the future and let's say uh, 15 years later that we're going to perform in australia 
So actually, on that first um, uh, Australian tour, uh, we actually connected with the uh, St. Albans uh, Dynamo members and fans and everything. And then last year, it was our biggest creation, uh, actually, Australian tour again. And of course, we were performing on your gala evening uh, in your club. Yeah, so, what, a, what a night that was. <laughs> Now, Ivana, your English is amazing, um, probably better than, than half of the Australians in Australia. Um, how did you learn e English? Was that at school? Was it at, uh, um, watching um, Americhke Sapunica like Santa Barbara? Or what else is popular over there? Uh, <laughs> a little bit of everything. I would like to say that um, all Croatians um, actually speak English because we're watching the movies, cartoons and everything. But uh, I had a luck. Um, I have an uncle. He lives in uh, California. Uh -huh. So uh, during my growing up, I was there like four or five times. And one time when I was like 20 years old, I stayed there and I actually studied for a year in Santa Rosa Junior College. So probably that's why. Yeah. And also privately, I'm, I'm working as a salesperson in um, international companies in Croatia and English is the uh, main language. There you go. Well, fantastic. It's 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 like we're speaking to you here in Melbourne. That that's um amazing. Um, Zapisic boys. Every time Croatia plays at the uh, World Cup or the Euros, um, a song comes that just just blows everyone out of their mind. Um, there's been some great songs over the years. Um, what's been your personally your favourite? That's a hard question. Could be a Dino uh, song. It could be a Croatia representatia song. But what's what's been what what's been some of your favourite songs? Uh, uh, this part I'm going to say in Croatian because it's uh, probably Croatian expression. To je kao da pitate majku koje dijete više voli. So if you mean what I what I, if it's you understand, like asking what... a mother who's got two children which one she loves more. Um, dep yeah. depends who's the golden child, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, now you understand. Uh, actually, um, we have we, we like to say it's like four aces, you know, when you play cards, you have four aces. So, srce vatreno, samo je jedno, neopisivo, igraj moja Hrvatska. When we are talking about the Croatian uh, national teams, um, I'm putting expression on Croatian national teams because our songs are not dedicated only to Croatian uh, football team. Uh, it's connected with them because of the results they made in the history. But um, if you ask us, one of our favorites is our first song in 2005. And uh, it's actually for uh, Dinamo Zagreb. And the name of the song is Boja Moj Hvena. Oh, yes. Excellent. Now, if you haven't heard that song, do YouTube it, uh, Boja Moj Hvena. Um, great song. And um, that that brings me to the next question. Uh, Euro 2024, there's already a big number of Australian Croatians planning a big exodus outside of uh, Melbourne, outside of Australia. Um, and I'm sure they're all looking forward to, will there be a song this year by Zapisic Boys ahead of Euro 2024? But of course it's going to be. That's, that's something like it's actually expected from us, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 like the main events for the Zapisic boys. But uh, uh, it, it can be better than make the song before uh, some kind of uh, let's say championships like this. And actually, we are the, these days in the studio. We are finishing our new songs, and and uh, actually, it's two of them. So we're gonna choose one of them, and we're gonna uh, let it out uh, before the Euro starts. Oh, can't wait! That's going to be fantastic. What well, what's your role in the in the uh, in the band? Do you do any of the uh, behind the scenes? Do you do any of the production? Do you do any of the composing? Any of the text or pieces? You know, um, the text writing, any of that sort of stuff. Well, I'm going to use the opportunity. I always say that on the on uh, our concert, but it's a great opportunity now uh, in this podcast. We um, each Zapšić boys member has his own role in a band, mm -hmm. and the most important thing is that everything's it's we say from our garage. Everything's from uh, from uh, from our house. Mm -hmm. So uh, my brother Marco, he's a songwriter. He writes all the lyrics for the Zapšić boys. So all the songs, you know, it's like maybe. 20 of them, maybe even more during the years. Uh, uh, Shala, he's our producer, making the, the production. Uh, Zdeslav's making the, the music. Uh, Sasha, he's like, um, 
He's actually in private also working in Croatian army as an IT uh, manager. So actually his job is uh, uh, our web pages and everything connected with Zapshi Boys on Social this part. Social media and that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, me, my role because the of the... Do you, do you get the coffee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm actually the also the singing and and I'm leading the the concerts. I'm leading the oh, concerts, yeah. interactions with the public, uh, uh, with the fans, and uh, leading the concerts, the songs, and everything. So that's my role in Zapshik Boys. So you're like the master of ceremonies on stage, but off the stage you're like the promoter. Yeah, actually, uh, during the growing up, I was the, the tourist animator. So that helped me to be relaxed more than the rest of the guys with a microphone. <laughs> there you go. Isn't that great? Now, um, we, we, are, we are speaking with Ivan Novosel, the promoter and the MC, um, and he also gets the coffee for the Zaprešić boys as well. But uh, Ivan, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, let's talk about yep. your, your connection with Dinamo Zagreb. Just recently, um, big changes at Dinamo. Velimir Zayets now is the new pres president. For those of you that don't, don't follow um, uh, Croatian football, he's like the legend. Zeko is his nickname. Um, tell, tell me, what's the feeling in Zagreb um, with these new changes? Because Dinamo fan or not a Dinamo Zagreb fan, we all know of, of the rather turbulent last 15, 20 years um, that Dinamo Zagreb fans have had to endure. Tell us, what's the feeling like in Zagreb these days regarding Dinamo? Well, uh, actually, uh, there are big, the, the, these changes are big. Not only the, the Belimid Zayats became the, the president, but uh, the structure and the, the leading of the club is changing because the, actually now the supporters have right supporters have right to vote for the board for the mm -hmm. for everything so not not supporters the members that's important thing yeah. so before before uh, this year that was not possible so uh these are big changes for the for for the club uh hopefully the the, the new board will lead the uh, the club uh, to the supporters and to the members but also the most important thing you know everybody knows that um Football today is uh, actually like Dinamo is like the biggest company in Croatia. So yeah. uh, heart is one thing, and leading the company is another. So hopefully they're going to do the the job great uh, again. But um, my connection is that uh, with the current board. Actually, I work as I, as I said. I I'm a salesperson, and um, uh, one of the sponsors of uh, Dinamo Zagreb is the company that I work in. So uh, not only because I was like 20 years um, starting as a battle boys, and then when you grow up, you became a fan. You know, you you, you yeah. switch uh, you switch the. Uh, uh, like you say the tribune yeah, you you the not grandstands, yeah yeah grandstand, you know now i'm like 45 going with my son on the games uh so actually the whole my life not only me and the the, the, the Zapshi boys group are connected with dinamo uh in that kind of way but um actually uh as uh, as i was already two times in uh, australia with Zapshish boys on a tour as i meet some great guys in uh, the, the dinamo st albans so actually they gave me an opportunity to be a dinamo zagreb promoter for uh, the whole australia mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so actually what's my job is uh, to promote uh, dinamo in australia to get closer you guys from Australia supporting Dinamo St. Albans or Dinamo Zagreb, wherever you are, and to work on the membership. Let's talk about that because that's something that is going to really, really get Dinamo Zagreb fans in, in, in Australia, in Melbourne, uh, connected with St. Albans Dinamo, very excited. Um, there's a new 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 initiative, as we say it in, in Croatian, how do we say it in English? Initiative, yeah? Um, yeah, that is initiative. It's in creation, yeah. That's right, and that's being born. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, and we can't talk too much because it's still in its very embryonic stages. It's still in its its early stages. But do tell us a little bit more about that. And then we've got a special guest to come on straight after that. Okay, so actually, uh, it, it it was my idea to to 
connect uh, to Dynamo clubs. I mean, yeah. there's, if you ask me, the, the story is already here. We only need to uh, to connect to those clubs on, uh, on the field, as, as, as I like to say, and uh, in the future to make some kind of relationship with those two clubs. So for the beginning, we, st we would like to start uh, with uh, membership of uh, Dynamo Zagreb fans in your club, in the Dynamo St. Albans. So actually, I'm going to use the opportunity to invite all your members and the Dynamo Zagreb fans to join and uh, to become a member of Dynamo Zagreb. So yeah. your, my friends from your club, the, the people that uh, was hosting us there and became our friends for life, uh, hopefully will explain in the club the way how to do it. Uh, there is some little catch because Dynamo Zagreb is like Udruga Grajana. I don't know how to say that uh, in English, but Public to be country, yeah. yeah, but to become a member, you have to open something like a uh, personal identification number, a uh, Croatian personal identification number, and uh, it's possible. You don't have to be a Croatian citizenship, or the uh, you don't have to have a Croatian citizenship to be. Uh, to request for the um, this personal identification number. So actually, that's the first step. And then um, when you receive that OIB number, you can uh, pay your membership and become a member of Dinamo Zagreb. Now, what we're going to now bring our next guest, a special guest, someone we all know, someone who hasn't been on the show since uh, since uh, episode one. He's the vice president of St. Albans Dinamo and someone who's been uh, heavily involved behind the scenes with this initiative. And he's also one of the first of the St. Albans Dinamo family to become uh, an official member of Dinamo Zagreb. A very warm welcome to John Bielos. John, the vice president. How are you, John? I'm, I'm awesome. Um, thanks for having us, Tonchi, and and Ivade Kakosi. Dobro sam, John. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the post podcast. And before we continue, happy birthday, man. Sretan ti rođendan iz Apršića, od cijele grupe Zapršić Boys i sve najbolje. Hvala, hvala također, hvala. Happy birthday, John. I, 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 I get Ivan to sing um, something to you, but, uh, you know, we, we, we might we might have YouTube and Facebook copyright breathing down our necks, I, I don't know. But, uh, no, all, all jokes aside, John, you've... Um, you've um, you were one of the first members, along with Ante uh, Rosandic, um, um, to, 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 to become a member of uh, Dinamo Zagreb. Tell us how you went about it and tell us what, what it means for you to, to connect the two clubs closer. Well, firstly, connecting the, the, the two clubs is going to be something that's going to um, yeah, be awesome for, for both clubs. Um, you know, having connection with Dinamo Zagreb, one of the best clubs in the world, is, um, is going to be fantastic for our, for our club and hopefully for, for Dinamo Zagreb. Um, with me, myself and, and Aunt and his little daughter, Garbella, she's only three. Um, so we're, we're, the, we're the first three um, Dinamo Zagreb members, which is which is pretty cool. Um, we have to go through a little bit of a step with uh, getting an OIB um, number, which is just one, for, it's one simple form. Um, okay. You fill in that form, um, you get your, your OIB number um, from the Croatian government, you fill in your one page uh, Dinamo Zagreb membership and, and away you go, you pay your your, your fee, the, the maximum fee is 40 euro, which is about 70 bucks, $75, um, and, and you become a member. So we're reaching out to all our all our members and, and all the viewers to um, become Dinamo Zagreb members from Australia. And remember, you don't have to be from Melbourne. You don't have to be St. Albans Dinamo. We've got a lot of fans that are that are tuning in from all parts of uh, of Australia. So feel free to uh, get in touch with John, get in, get in touch with the club. Is that the best way, John, to, to, uh, to contact you or to contact you via the club? Yeah, look, um, we'll put up a, a, a Facebook post um, or um, yeah, yeah, we'll the, the Sinema Zinema, um, uh, inbox email. Um, either either, but we'll put up some we'll, we'll put up some communication up on, on Facebook and our socials, yeah. and then um, we'll go from there. But we'd love to get as many um, of our members, and like you said, um, you know, Dinamo Zagreb fans across Australia, um, a part of Dinamo Zagreb. Yeah. Now the aim is to get uh, fifty. Even there, we're, we're hoping to get fifty, but I'm sure there are more than fifty Dinamo yeah. Zagreb fans. Australia you know, wide. yeah. Hopefully, it's going to be much more. But you know why it's fifty? No. So actually. No. Yeah, uh, uh, there is a background because this year is a 50th tournament of uh, 
Croatians in Australia and uh, you are the most famous, right? Absolutely. So, uh, our friend John, he's 50 from yesterday. Uh, <laughs> today, I'm not sure if which day is in Australia. 21. 21. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so let's let's say we we put the, the like because the, this number is reachable, okay, for the beginning, and, and it's a nice number uh, to start with. And hopefully, uh, our goal is in the future, maybe in a year maybe sooner to uh, to join all your members to become members uh, of Dinamo Zagreb why not that's 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 a great uh, goal and great story for the for the future yeah absolutely gentlemen just thank one, you just yeah. one, Go on, just yeah. one thing with with the 50 um Dinamo Somos Dinamo is 50 next year so um yeah that's our 50th anniversary as well there you go. 50th, uh, 50, 50th tournament this year, 50th and of, uh, 50th birthday for Dinamo next year. And John, you turned 50 the other day on Monday. Well, 51, but who's uh, counting after 50, yeah? So no one counts after 50, after 50 you don't, you don't From count. personal experience, no one counts after 21. What are you talking about? Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Ivana, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy lifestyle, a busy life out in Zagreb to take some time and speak to us. We, we really appreciate it. We cannot wait for the Zarpesic boys to come back down under and we cannot wait to hear the new song. Thank you guys for inviting me. It was my pleasure. I am very So we're going to finish in Croatia. Our mother language, very pozdrav od cijele grupe Zarpesic boys. I nadamo se da se uskoro vidimo ponovo kod vas na našem velikom koncertu. Thank you, Ivani. Thank you to everyone at the Zaprešić boys for those lovely messages. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ivani. Folks, that was John Bilos, our own Ivan from um, from St. Albans, and we also have Ivan Novosel from Zagreb. We'll be back very, very shortly, straight after this break. Boom. And we're coming to you watching live footage now from uh, from the Churchill Reserve where we're seeing the game between Strathmore Split and Gippsland United being played out. We've gone 37 minutes into the first half. As we can see, unfortunately, Strathmore Split are down one goal to nil. And that's uh, early in the um, – in the, well, that's it. still the game's early. There's still, what, what 55-odd minutes to play. But um, after this, you can straight away click over to uh, YouTube, the Football Victoria YouTube channel, and you can take in the uh, game between Strathmore Split and Gippsland United. Hopefully, Strathmore can get up um, and, um, and 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 score at least two goals, maybe even more, to 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 progress through to the next round. Speaking of the Australia Cup tomorrow, remember this, guys. Um, get down to Churchill Reserve, 8 p.m. kickoff. Um, Australia Cup action, Dinamo taking on Geelong Rangers. While that's happening on pitches two and three, we've got the Junior Boys NPL and also inside the club rooms, the Burger Night for Jacob's Day. So do turn up that little bit earlier, uh, Thursday, uh, 28th of March, which is tomorrow from 6 p.m. Burger and chips costs only $20. And if you're like me and you're not eating meat for tomorrow, well, just buy, 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 a, uh, buy a burger and chips um, as a donation. You can certainly do that. Folks, I uh, wish you all the very, very best for the coming Easter Easter um, um, blood done, as we say in Croatian, the Easter holidays. Um, it's going to be, um, no doubt, a, a very memorable one this year. 
Enjoy, and we will see you next Wednesday night on Dinner More TV. In the meantime, stay safe and enjoy the uh, enjoy the festivities over the coming seven days. Bye for now. Now, my name is Taunchy Prusas, and I certainly hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Good night. Thank you.